Well, greetings and salutations, Series 7 test takers. This is the Series 7 Guru coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas with a little uh, video for, a, you know, a common thing that people get hung up on. Is it derp or is it drep? Well, let's uh, talk about what derp is. Derp is a memory aid to remind us about how it works for a stock. You know, we have a declared date. And the declared date is set by the board of directors. And, you know, maybe the board of directors gets together on a Monday. Uh, oh, let's see, October uh, 1st and declares a dividend. You know, once the uh, board declares that dividend, it becomes a, a current liability of the corporation causing working capital to fall. And they say, uh, who are we going to pay the dividend to? You know, we're going to pay it to shareholders as of record. Again, set by the board of directors. And maybe they say they're going to pay it to shareholders as of record. Uh, Thursday, uh, October 16th. I'm just making that up. And then the board says, and when we got to cut the checks. And maybe the board says, we're going to cut the checks. We're going to pay the dividend on... November 1st. And that has no effect on the uh, working capital because when they pay the dividend, the uh, current assets go down, the cash is at the same amount that the liabilities go down. And so we have uh, in the securities industry what's called a test question, the Uniform Practice Code. And the Uniform Practice Code standardizes practices within the securities industry secondary trading practices. We can know people are buying and selling. And uh, let's see, let's get a different color here. That alone could be like a recognition question, like you know, which of the following standardizes secondary trading practices within the securities industry? And you would say A, the Uniform Practice Code. And they that's where the X date uh, comes from. Okay, so, uh, you know, if we look at the shareholder list on Thursday, September 16th, you should know from the Uniform Practice Code that regular wage settlement, regular wage settlement, October 16th here, is a T plus two. And so it takes uh, two business days to show up on the shareholder list uh, to get this dividend. So we see here, if we buy this uh, stock on Wednesday, Wednesday, October 15th. Boom, let's put that there. That you would not be on the shareholder list in time, right? Because as we said, it takes two days. And so T plus one, you wouldn't be there. And uh, let's see, if you buy this on uh, Tuesday, October 14th. You know, T plus one, T plus two, you would be there in time. So kind of interesting if we look at this scenario here. If you buy the stock on Tuesday, T plus one, T plus two, you do get the dividend. So let me get this. T plus one, T plus two. You're on the shareholder list to get the uh, dividend. So Tuesday would be the last day you could buy that stock and still receive that uh, dividend. Uh, Wednesday, very testable, is the first day on which the stock no longer trades with the dividend attached. That alone is a testable definition. You know, what best describes the X date? X is Latin for without, right? If I ask that you have an X spouse, that means you're no longer trading with your spouse attached. And that X date is a function, again, of the Uniform Practice Code. So that's when we say DERP. What we're saying is that uh, it's a memory aid device to remind us the chronological sequence of how this works. And, you know, you could get a question like all the following are set by the Board of Directors, except. 
right? The X date is set by the Uniform Practice Code uh, of, uh, of the uh, secondary trading, right? And so that's what we mean by this uh, mnemonic device DERP, just to remind us. And remember, those dates, well, the one that is not set by the board of directors, the X date. And the X date, we said, is one business data prior. So there's a couple of test questions here. It is, uh, you should know, it's, whoop, let's get a smaller font there. It's one business prior to record. It's not a coincidence, it's one business pr day prior to record. Because remember, that's, you know, uh, T plus two. So it's not a coincidence. And we said, what is it? That two is testable. We said the X date is the first date. There's others. It's the first date on which the stock no longer trades with a dividend attached. So we would expect, for example, the stock to go down uh, by the amount of the dividend. So if the stock was trading at 45 on Tuesday, and uh, if you bought it Tuesday, you get, I'll just make up a number, 75 cents, and then you don't get it on Wednesday, it should open up at 44 and a quarter because it doesn't have that uh, cash in the corporate shell or won't have it in the corporate shell. First day in which the stock no longer trades with a dividend attached. Okay, so uh, lots of, you know, you're going to bump into this. I'm going to put this in the uh, Series 7 playlist. I might put it, drop it in the SIE as well. It's more of an issue. You know, SIE is more recognition than anything. Now, uh, the reason I made the video is people say, Dean, I thought I had this down. It was derp. And, uh, you know, now I'm getting questions where it's actually not derp, it's drep. You know, drep means the declared date, the record date, and the X date is one business day after the uh, dividend. And they're all set by the board of directors. And it's not that you're not getting, it's that you're confusing this process. Remember, this is all about secondary trading with the process of an open-end fund. In an open-end fund, there is no secondary trading. And so the open-end fund knows on any given day who its shareholders are. Their shareholder list is controlled by the open-end mutual fund. So if it's an open-end mutual fund, it would be declared date set by the board of directors, record date set by the board of directors, the X date, uh, set by the board of directors, usually one day after record, and the payable date, all controlled by the board of directors. And so, uh, or the fund, you know, however you want to think of that. Anyways, that's where that comes in. So that was the point of this uh, little video. I hope that was helpful. And remember, you're not supposed to use the independent X date as an artifice. What does that word mean? It means an artificial sense of urgency. So, you know, selling dividends using this uh, process, as you can see, you know, you know, you're not supposed to confuse people about, you know, dividends. And so selling dividends is a big no-no. I say, hey, you know, if you buy the stock today, Wednesday, October 15th, or Wednesday, October 15th, or 14th, you get the dividend. But if you wait till tomorrow, Wednesday, no dividend for you. And you say, well, Dean, isn't it going down by the amount of the dividend? Wouldn't I be better served to just buy it, you know, on the X date with uh, out creating the unnecessary tech tax situation? And I go, well, gee, you're no fun. <laughs> can I you say, Dean, can I talk to your supervisor? Big no-no. Okay, so the uh, point of this video is, it, is it derp or is it drop? Right, so let's just review. In the secondary market, in the secondary market, we have a uniform practice code, which standardizes practice within the securities industry. The board declares the dividend Monday, October 1st. They say, we're going to pay it to shareholders as of record October 16th. We're going to cut the check on November 1st. And the shareholder list is always changing. We have a uniform practice code, which standard, standardizes secondary trading in the securities industry. And the X date is a function of that uniform practice code. It's not a coincidence the X date is one business day prior to record because it takes T plus two Tuesday, T plus one is Wednesday, T plus two Thursday, I get the dividend. Wednesday, T plus one, I do not. So Wednesday is the first date on which the stock no longer trades with a dividend attached. It's a functional uniform practice code. It's one business day prior to the record date. 
It's the first date on which the stock no longer trades with a dividend attached. Open-end mutual funds aren't trading on the secondary market. We know who the owners are at any given time. In an open-end uh, fund, it's dropped, declared, record, X payable, all controlled by the board. All right. Remember, inch by inch, your Series 7 is a cinch. Yard by yard, your Series 7 and ha is hard. And I'll see you for the next lecture request. This was a request. Any requests you have, send my way, and I'm more hap than happy to make you a little video. Bye-bye.